Hi everyone, today I came with part 2 of Biochemistry Super Revision for FMG students. Here I am going to start with Electron Transport Chain. Electron Transport Chain is very important topic for FMG students. Here I am requesting to every FMG student don't miss this topic and don't go to exam without learning this topic. This electron transport chain is occurring in the inner mitochondrial membrane. In electron transport chain, we actually get ATP. From FADH, I have told you that we get 1.5 ATP from the FADH and 2.5 ATP from the NADH. In electron transport chain, we have five complexes, complex 1, complex 2, complex 3, and complex 4, and complex 5. This NADH plus H plus is going to give its hydrogen to complex 1. And this FADH is going to give its hydrogen to complex 2. Once FADH gives hydrogen to complex 2, it becomes FAD plus. Once NADH plus H plus is going to give its hydrogen to complex 1, it becomes NAD plus. We have a one carrier protein which is known as coenzyme Q which is also known as ubiquinone. Don't confuse ubiquinone with ubiquitin. This ubiquitin is an enzyme complex which is responsible for protein degradation. Now this coenzyme Q will receive hydrogen from complex 1 and complex 2 and this coenzyme Q is going to give its hydrogen to complex 3. And now there is another carrier protein which is known as cytochrome C. This cytochrome C will receive hydrogen from the complex 3 and after that, this cytochrome C is going to give its hydrogen to complex 4. Here, here is very important point which you need to know that here oxygen is added and we get water. It means hydrogen is added to oxygen and this process is known as oxidation. We know the oxidation is addition of oxygen and this process is very important that oxidation is occurring at step 4 that complex 4 now at complex 5 what you need to know you have seen that hydrogen moment the moment of hydrogen actually results the formation of ATP the moment of hydrogen results the formation of ATP at complex 5 what is going to happen there is addition of ADP plus inorganic phosphate and it's converted into ATP. ADP plus inorganic phosphate at the complex 5 is going to be converted into ATP and this process is known as phosphorylation. That's why electron transport chain is also known as oxidative phosphorylation. Phosphorylation is occurring at complex 5 and oxidation is occurring at complex 4. These are both important points which I want you to remember. Now these complex have different names. Complex 1 is known as NADH dehydrogenase. Complex 2 is known as succinate dehydrogenase. Complex 3 cytochrome reductase. Complex 4 very important it's also known as cytochrome oxidase and complex 5 is known as f0 f1 particle now comes our very important topic of electron transport chain that is inhibitors of electron transport chain when we talk inhibitors uh, inhibitors of electron transport chain that means those inhibitors are going to inhibit both oxidation and phosphorylation. 
any inhibitor which is inhibiting complex 1, 2, 3 and 4 those are going to inhibit both oxidation and phosphorylation ok you have to remember this if any inhibitor is going to inhibit only complex 5 that is going to inhibit only phosphorylation not oxidation if any inhibitor is going to inhibit only oxidation that will inhibit both oxidation as well as in as well as phosphorylation don't confuse guys you will understand everything in these inhibitors complex one its inhibitors are rotenone you can see at the end of rotenone the one is written phenobarbitone amibarbitate complex two inhibitors are malonate which is three carbon compound carboxin which is a fungicide complex three inhibitors are fenformin actimycin a british anti lewisite which is also known as dimer caprol and complex four inhibitors are very important cyanide carbon monoxide and hydrogen sulfide now see what are uncouplers actually all these inhib complex inhibitors from complex 1 to complex 4 they inhibit both oxidation as well as phosphorylation now what are uncouplers they only inhibit phosphorylation which means they inhibit only complex 5 but the oxidation is occurring it means it means complex 4 is working here now there are two types of uncouplers synthetic and natural natural uncouplers are also known as physiological uncouplers in synthetic uncouplers we have two examples dinitrophenol and aspirin and in natural uncouplers we have thermogenin very important which is present in brown fat and this thermogenin is responsible for non shivering thermogenesis and it is present in inner mitochondrial membrane what are the other examples of natural uncouplers free fatty acids thyroxine and bilirubin see guys this adp to atp conversion is inhibited by oligomycin these are the two different questions which you have to remember that if the question is asking adb to adb atp conversion is inhibited by the answer will be oligomycin which is complex 5 inhibitor if question is asking atp to adp transfer that's inhibited by atractylocyte now see this question guys that oxidative phosphorylation is inhibited by all except answer question is saying all except this carbon monoxide which is the inhibitor of complex 4 it means in it inhibits both oxidative phosphor oxidation as well as phosphorylation you can see the malonate malonate is inhibitor of complex 2 if complex 2 is inhibited it means the other complexes that is complex 3 complex 4 and complex 5 will not work okay it means both oxidation as well as phosphorylation will not occur it means the answer is not malonate but the here the answer is thermogenin why because thermogenin is natural uncoupler i have told you that it is natural uncoupler what is the definition of uncoupler it is they inhibit only phosphorylation it means step 5 but the oxidation is occurring that's why the answer will be thermogenin thermogenin only inhibits phosphorylation it does not inhibit oxidative phosphorylation now let's see another topic that glucose in ors is absorbed via in GIT, once we take ORS, in ORS we have glucose. That glucose is absorbed via sodium glucose transporter 1. Sodium glucose transporter 1. And here you can see 
sodium glucose transporter 2 which is a sim port and it's used for glucose reabsorption in early proximal convoluted tubule how to remember guys this SGLT2 we have two kidneys okay and we have one gastrointestinal system and in GIT we have SGLT1 and SGLT2 is present in the kidneys and it is responsible for glucose reabsorption in early P PCT and glucose in ORS is absorbed via SGLT1 hope this is clear we have foods which have low glycemic index and which foods you can say they are having low glycemic index those foods have low glycemic in index who have slow absorption and slow rise in the glucose level those foods are having low glycemic index this is this was also an fmg question another uh, point to be noted here that glucose and amino acids are 100 percent reabsorbed in early proximal convoluted tubule this is another mcq from fmg point of view now let's see another topic that is essential fatty acids essential fatty acids are also known as polyunsaturated fatty acids polyunsaturated fatty acids essential fatty acids are of two types omega 6 fatty acids and omega 3 fatty acids omega 3 fatty acids and omega 6 fatty acids in omega 3 family we have sarvonic acid docosahexaenoic acid alpha linolenic acid and timnodonic acid among omega 6 fatty acid we have gamma linolenic acid linoleic acid and arachidonic acid see guys alpha linolenic acid this one and linoleic acid this one are most essential they are most essential if we get these two fatty acids in diet they can synthesize other four fatty acids which means alpha linole uh, alpha linolenic acid is precursor of omega-3 fatty acids and linoleic acid is precursor of omega-6 fatty acid it means from alpha linolenic acid we can get these these two and from linoleic acid we get these two that's why these two are most essential and also remember among uh, uh, omega-3 uh, fatty acids or among polyunsaturated fa fatty acids the alpha linolenic acid is anti-atherogenic anti-atherogenic it means it prevents it prevents the formation of thrombus okay this was another fmg exam question now let's see another topic that there are different pathways which which are occurring in different compartments so let's try to remember them in my mitochondria and cytoplasm we have urea cycle heme synthesis gluconeogenesis these three pathways in cytoplasm we have glycolysis glycogenesis glucogenolysis exos monophosphate pathway and fatty acid synthesis in mitochondria we have TCA cycle which is also known as Krebs cycle electron transport chain link reaction beta oxidation of fatty acids ketone body synthesis and ketone body utilization now let's remember another important topic that we have some uh, blots like western blot northern blot 
and southern blot this western blot assay is done for proteins it's for proteins northern blot is for rna and southern blot is for dna how to remember them let's see guys in hindi we say south ka dosa south ka dosa d for dna and this northern you can see nor this r for rna okay it sounds like uh, nor okay and you can say the western people like proteinaceous foods so remember like that this western blot is also known as immuno blot what are chaperones chaperones are responsible for proper folding of proteins you might have heard about some disorders which are known as protein misfolding disorders that can be problem in the chaperones chaperones are very important they are the uh, proteins which are responsible for folding okay and what are isoenzymes guys isoenzymes are different forms of and different forms of same enzyme different forms of same enzyme that catalyze same reaction the enzyme is same okay the enzyme is same but the same enzyme is having different forms for example lactate dehydrogenase for lactate dehydrogenase we have six forms but the enzyme is same ldh1 ldh2 ldh3 ldh4 and ldh5 what is it, what does it mean different forms what does it mean the enzyme is same the enzyme is same but what does it mean different forms different forms mean they have different structure means they have all these they all these ldh have different structures and different location and different location for example our ldh1 that is lactate dehydrogenase 1 is present in our heart and lactate dehydrogenase is present in our blood it means ldh1 is abundant in heart ldh2 is abundant in blood as you can see guys a patient who is having myocardial infarction that is heart attack in that condition this will flip it means i have told you normally what is going to happen normally we have abundant ldh1 in heart but in myocardial infarction the ldh1 is going to enter into the blood stream and then there will be higher amount of ldh1 in the blood and lesser amount of ldh2 in the blood it means in mi patients we have ldh1 more than ldh2 but normally we have ldh2 more than ldh1 this is the case which you have to remember let's see another topic that we have some coagulation factors like 2, 7, 9, 10. 2, 7, 9, 10. These are the coagulation factors. These are inactivated coagulation factors. 2, 7, 9, 10. They are activated by vitamin K. Vitamin K. K for coagulation. Vitamin K. And this vitamin K is responsible for gamma carboxylation of glutamate. These coagulation factors have some glutamate residues in their structure and this vitamin k is going to add carboxyl group to the glutamate and they get activated okay see you guys this vitamin k is responsible for the activation of these glotting factors now we have some drugs like dicumarol or warfarin these are going to inhibit a enzyme which is known as vitamin k epoxide reductase and therefore prevent formation of active form of vitamin k or they prevent once this enzyme is inhibited there is not formation of active form of 2 7 9 10 these coagulation factors are not formed this is the point which you have to remember this is the warfarin or dicumarol now let's see another important topic that once we get atp 
this ATP is going to be converted into cyclic AMP. This cyclic AMP can be converted into 5- AMP. Once we get cyclic AMP, this cyclic AMP is going to activate our enzymes which are known as kinases. And what these kinases are going to do, they activate proteins and enzymes. Proteins and enzymes. And once they are activated, means they, these kinases are going to phosphorylate these proteins and enzymes. These proteins and enzymes are not phosphorylated, but the kinases are going to phosphorylate, phosphorylate these proteins and enzymes and they will be activated or inactivated depend on the enzyme type of enzyme now guys let's see that our insulin is going to decrease cyclic amp very important point and but glucagon is going to increase cyclic amp very important points you have to remember these two points see guys glucagon is active in fasting state here I am going to give you an important point that insulin is anabolic hormone and glucagon is catabolic hormone. Insulin is anabolic, glucagon is catabolic. We know the fasting and starvation, they are the catabolic states. Therefore, the glucagon will be active. Okay, Glucagon is active in fasting state and catabolic states. Like what are the catabolic states examples? glycogenolysis ketogenesis gluconeogenesis plasma amino acids and which means the the uh, glucagon is responsible for increasing glycogenolysis increasing ketone body formation increasing gluconeogenesis increasing plasma amino acids okay now here you have a question that what is the effect of glucagon what is the effect of glucagon? I have told you it is catabolic hormone. The first option is retards glycogenolysis. No, it's not going to retard the glycogenolysis. It is going to, it is going to activate glycogenolysis. Therefore, this is not the answer. It retards ketogenesis. No, it is going to activate ketogenesis, formation of ketone bodies. It decreases plasma amino acids. No, I told you it increases pl plasma amino acids. Therefore, the answer will be it promotes gluconeogenesis. Yes, I have told you it promotes, it increases gluconeogenesis. Therefore, the answer is already written here that it, it promotes gluconeogenesis. I have told you insulin is an anabolic hormone. It activates glycolysis, very important glycogenesis fat synthesis what is true about fat state fat state means when you have eaten something that is the fat state okay what is true about fat state in fat state what you are going to do you are to store uh, things it means you are in the anabolic state now let's see guys the decrease insulin decrease glucagon no it's wrong decrease insulin decrease glucagon they are wrong but this uh, decrease insulin is wrong but the decrease glucagon is right b option is increase insulin i told you insulin is anabolic hormone yes it will increase increase glucagon no in glucagon will decrease wrong increase insulin sorry decrease insulin increase glucagon no insulin will increase this is wrong increase glucagon this is also wrong now let's see this option increase insulin yes because insulin anabolic hormone it will increase in the fat state decrease glucagon yes it is catabolic hormone it will decrease in the fat state i hope this is clear here i have written the point insulin is anabolic hormone it is released in fat state glucagon is catabolic hormone it is released in fasting state 
our beautiful heart it's going to use fatty acids in the fat state fatty acids in the fasting state state and in starvation it uses ketone bodies very important see this question guys blood glucose levels cannot be augmented or maintained by muscle glycogen due to lack of why the muscle glycogen is not going to maintain the blood glucose why why the muscle glycogen is not going to maintain the blood glucose it is due to deficiency of due to lack of glucose 6 phosphatase in the muscle in our liver we have glucose 6 phosphatase but in muscles we don't have glucose 6 phosphatase that's why muscles are not going to maintain the blood glucose level here you can see you here you, you will understand in muscle glycogen we we don't have glucose uh, we don't have enzyme but we have glucose 6 phosphate in muscles we have in muscle glycogen we have uh, glucose 6 phosphate sorry in muscles we have glucose 6 phosphate but we don't have glucose 6 phosphate phosphatase which will cut the uh, phosphate from the glucose so that we will get the glucose okay we don't have glucose 6 phosphatase in the muscle but in liver glycogen you can see we have glucose 6 phosphate we have glucose 6 phosphate also we have glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme which will cut the glucose from the which will cut the phosphate from the sixth side sixth carbon and we will get the glucose and this glucose will be released in the bloodstream okay guys i hope this is clear see guys another question that glucose can be synthesized from all except it can be synthesized from amino acids like most glucogenic amino acid is alanine i have told you there are glucogenic amino acids okay glycerol and propionic acid are the uh, or chain fatty acids where we can get the glucose actually from lactic acid also we can get the glucose how once the lactic acid is active uh, acted by lactate dehydrogenase it gets converted into pyruvate and the pyruvate through the gluconeogenesis uh, we can get the glucose but acetoacetate acetyl coa fats they are never glucogenic we don't get glucose from these three substrates okay now let's come to our another beautiful topic that is galactose metabolism galactose metabolism what you have to know guys first of all here i am going to give you some important points which will help you to remember the galactose metabolism very easily in milk and milk products we we have lactose lactose in is present in milk and milk products okay this lactose itself is made up of glucose and galactose lactose is made up of glucose and galactose in fruit juices we have sucrose in fruit juices we have sucrose and the sucrose is made up of glucose plus fructose glucose plus fructose for galactose metabolism we have galactose and this galactose is going to be converted into galactose 1 phosphate by the by the help of an enzyme which is known as galactokinase if this galactokinase is absent the disease is occurring which is known as minor galactosemia minor galactosemia now this galactose 1 phosphate is going to be converted into udp galactose by the help of an enzyme which is very important enzyme that's known as galactose 1 phosphate uridyl transferase or simply galt galactose 1 phosphate uridyl transferase and this udp galactose is acted by epimerase and gets converted into udp glucose and the 
deficiency of this enzyme is very rare okay now let's see a very important disease which is known as classical galactosemia or galactosemia and this galactosemia is due to deficiency of this enzyme GAD this one galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase now what is going to happen guys if this enzyme is deficient this galactose 1-phosphate is not going to be converted into UDB galactose it means galactose 1-phosphate is going to accumulate in various sites where it is going to accumulate it can accumulate in the liver inside the liver and the patient will be having hepatomegaly jaundice because of uh, due to uh, accumulation of galactose 1-phosphate also it can be uh, accumulate in it can accumulate inside the brain the patient will be having mental retardation and it can accumulate inside the inside the lens and the patient will be having oil drop cataract and you can see this is the oil drop cataract this image which is very important and this galactosemia is absolute contraindication for breastfeeding which is the repeatedly asked uh, asked question in the fmg and don't forget this this is the absolute contraindication for breastfeeding why why the mother cannot breastfeed to the baby why i have told you that sorry i told you that milk and milk products contain lactose and this lactose contains galactose and the baby cannot take up this galactose because uh, the baby is not having this enzyme galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase i hope this is clear now you can uh, see this question a newborn baby a newborn baby refuses breast milk it refuses uh, baby refuses breast milk but accepts glucose only accepts glucose and what and he is jaundiced uh, patient is having hepatomegaly and eyes shows cataract every point is giving you the diagnosis of galactosemia i hope see you guys uh, baby refuses breast milk why the breast milk contains galactose that's why the baby is refusing i have told you galactose one phosphate will accumulate inside the liver therefore the patient will be having hepatomegaly and jaundice and also galactose one phosphate will accumulate inside the eyes therefore the patient will be having cataract which cataract oil drop cataract i hope this is clear and in treatment what you have to give you have to give galactose free diet to the baby galactose free diet to the baby now if the question is asked if a newborn with jaundice not relieved on phototherapy if you are giving phototherapy to a newborn if you will see uh, jaundice in a newborn and you are giving the phototherapy and the baby is not relieving immediately think of galactosemia immediately think of galactosemia now let's talk about fructose metabolism fructose metabolism again i'm showing you here you that fruit juices contain sucrose and the sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose now this is related to fruit juices f for fruit juices f for fructose this fructose is going to be converted into fructose one phosphate and the enzyme is fructokinase if the if this enzyme is deficient it will result essential fructosuria and this fructose one phosphate is going to be converted into another product which is uh, it uh, the the product is not important what you have to remember the enzyme is very important and the enzyme is aldolase b aldolase b see guys there is a condition which is known as hereditary fructose intolerance hereditary fructose intolerance it is due to deficiency of 
aldol is b aldol is b what is going to happen if this enzyme is deficient this substrate will accumulate that is fructose one phosphate will accumulate where it is going to accumulate it will accumulate inside the liver once it will accumulate inside inside the liver the patient will be having hepatomegaly with hypoglycemia why the patient is going to have hypoglycemia because i have told you if uh, that if uh, this uh, fructose one phosphate accumulate inside the liver it will result hepatomegaly but how it is going to uh, how it is going to how uh, the hypoglycemia is going to occur actually this fructose one phosphate will accumulate and inhibit glycogen phosphorylase can you recall this point that glycogen phosphorylase is the rate limiting enzyme for gluconeogenesis once the once the glycogen phosphorylase is is inhibited the gluconeogenesis will not occur therefore the patient will be having hypoglycemia because we cannot get the glucose from gluconeogenesis i hope this is clear and this fructose one phosphate will accumulate inside the kidneys and the patient will be having kidney failure if not treated okay now let's see this question a 10 month old boy starts developing severe jaundice severe jaundice with hepatomegaly with hepatomegaly and symptoms of hypoglycemia on on starting on starting fruit juice what is the enzyme deficiency you can see that the patient is having severe jaundice hepatomegaly okay the liver is enlarged and the symptoms of hypoglycemia every point i have explained you guys on starting fruit juice i have told you fruit juice f for fruit f for fructose it is related to fructose what is the enzyme deficiency the enzyme deficiency is aldolase b aldolase b and the, what is the disease that disease name is hereditary fructose intolerance now you can see this note point here which is very important if in pediatric opd uh, the patient is coming with problem with food in pediatric opd if patient is having any problem with food like diarrhea vomiting abdominal distension any of them you, what you have to see you have to look at weaning you have to look at weaning if the baby uh, is coming before the weaning that uh, what is uh, what does it mean weaning weaning means uh, means before 6 months and after weaning means after 6 months okay uh, generally uh, in weaning in before weaning we take the time of 1 week to 1 month 1 week or 1 month in question you will be given 1 week or 1 month okay okay if before weaning if the baby is coming before weaning with food problem like diarrhea vomiting abdominal distension think up galactosemia very important if the baby is coming after weaning with the problem of diarrhea vomiting abdominal distension think of aldolase b deficiency that is hereditary fructose intolerance i hope this is clear to you remember another very simple point that the fructose is major source of energy for sperms now now guys let's see another important topic that is lipoproteins lipo means lipid and proteins means proteins these lipoproteins also contain proteins which are known as apoproteins lipoproteins contain proteins which are known as apoproteins a protein present in lipoproteins we have different types of lipoproteins like chylomicron chylomicron remnant vldl vldl remnant ldl and hdl chylomicron is is having the largest size 
is the it's the largest lipoprotein and hdl is the smallest lipoprotein now see guys i have told you what is meant by apoprotein it is a protein present in lipoproteins this chylomicron remnant is having an apoprotein which is known as apo b48 and apo e and hdl is having apo a apo c and apo e a c e also remember hdl contains a very important enzyme which is known as alcat lecithin cholesterol acid transferase lecithin cholesterol acid transferase see guys hdl contains cholesterol once the hdl is taking the cholesterol i told you it contains enzyme alcat and this enzyme will act on the cholesterol and convert this cholesterol into cholesterol ester therefore hdl carries cholesterol in the form of cholesterol ester this will be the cholesterol ester which is present in the hdl okay also remember a protein apo a protein which is known as apo1 which activates this alcat hdl is cardio protective it it is cardio pro protective and it is having minimum triglycerides it is having minimum triglycerides and having maximum phospholipids which phospholipid that is lecithin very important what is the significance of this lecithin it is deficient in preterm babies it is deficient in preterm babies therefore if this is deficient it can result in respiratory distress syndrome in the babies okay see guys what is the second messenger involved involved in vasodilation due to nitric oxide that is cyclic gmp what is the second messenger of insulin and glucagon that is cyclic amp see guys arginine is acted by an enzyme that is known as nitric oxide synthase and we get nitric oxide nitric oxide is also known as endothelin derived relaxant factor endothelin derived relaxant factor this arginine if this arginine is acted by arginase it will be converted into urea and ornithin urea and ornithin i hope up to this i hope up to this is clear everything now see this important topic that is vitamins every time you will get three four questions even five questions from the vitamins don't leave this topic guys i have covered every important mcq in the vitamins here don't miss out vitamins first vitamin is vitamin b1 which is also known as thymine its deficiency results very very and uh, also it results wernicke encephalopathy in alcoholics there are different types of berry berry like wet berry berry and uh, dry berry berry just try to remember only berry berry okay uh, also wernicke encephalopathy in the alcoholics if uh, you will see the alcoholic who is having vitamin b1 deficiency uh, uh, that is the case of wernicke's encephalopathy okay it, uh, it also results lactic acidosis vitamin b2 deficiency b2 is also known as riboflavin riboflavin okay in riboflavin deficiency what you are going to see uh, that's known as riboflavinosis and uh, you will see corneal vascularization over the cornea you will see small small blood vessels appearing okay also you will see chelosis which is also known as uh, angular stomatitis chelosis is also known as angular stomatitis which is inflammation of corner of mouth you can see the inflammation over the corner of mouth which is seen in the b2 deficiency b2 deficiency also will be having 
magenta tongue which is slight purplish color tongue or glossites inflammation of tongue and the patient will be having fishy body odor okay just try to remember here angular stomatitis or chelosis which is also known as chelosis or corneal vascularization these two points are generally given in the question and b3 i have talked about this detailed that uh, niacin deficiency results pellagra i have told you the six d's of pellagra also uh, vitamin b5 which is also known as pantothenic acid its deficiency results burning burning foot syndrome b6 deficiency which is also known as pyridoxine its deficiency results peripheral neuropathy sideroblastic anemia you might have heard that the uh, patients of tuberculosis if they are taking anti tubercular drugs like isoniazid this isoniazid toxicity can result the peripheral neuropathy in the uh, tuberculosis patients why due to because it can result in b6 deficiency that's why if you are giving isoniazid to tuber uh, tuberculosis patient you should give b6 also see guys and this question is asked in the exams be aware about these things b7 which is also known as biotin its deficiency results multiple carboxylase deficiency and in uh, in multiple carboxylase deficiency you will be having tom cat urine smell or uh, the patient will be having um, like seizures or feeding problems uh, and all that but uh, just try to remember only this point also in biotin deficiency i have all already talked that it can result in the alopecia that is hair fall okay b9 deficiency b9 is also known as folate or folic acid it is deficiency results megaloblastic anemia and neural tube defects very important in exam you will get the question how you can prevent the neural tube defects by giving vitamin b9 see this another important topic here which is known as folate right see guys methyl tetrahydrofolate methyl tetrahydrofolate which is inactive form of vitamin b9 which is inactive form of vitamin b9 and this is activated by vitamin b12 therefore we get tetrahydrofolate which is active form of vitamin b9 what is meant by folate trap folate trap occurs in vitamin b12 deficiency if b12 is not there tetrahydrofolate is not formed this will not be formed and the folate means methyl tetrahydrofolate is trapped in methyl tetrahydrofolate this will be this tetrahydrofolate is trapped sorry this tetrahydrofolate will be trapped in the form of methyl tetrahydrofolate in b12 deficiency and this is known as folate trap which means the folate is trapped now in the form of methyl tetrahydrofolate that is inactive form of vitamin b9 i hope this is clear this is so simple which you can remember now vitamin b12 deficiency b12 is also known as cyanocobalamin its deficiency results megaloblastic anemia sub acute combined degeneration of spinal cord very important every point is important guys hyper segmented neutrophil you can see in neutrophils we have two to five lobes you can see the multiple lobes you can see the multiple lobes which is the hyper segmented neutrophil these are the multiple lobes of the nuclei inside the neutrophil this is hyper segmented neutrophil seen in vitamin b12 deficiency also guys in gastric tummy patients in which the stomach is removed in those patients you will see b12 deficiency even in ileal resection if the patient is is having any kind of problem in the ileum and the ileum is uh, resected 
that also results the megaloblastic anemia or vitamin b12 deficiency i hope this is clear you guys uh, can notice that uh, this uh, vitamin b12 is absorbed from where it is absorbed from idm okay and why in gastrectomy patients uh, b12 deficiency uh, b12 deficiency occurs because the intrinsic factor is released from the stomach which is very important for the absorption of vitamin b12 that's why in gastrectomy patients we see b12 deficiency i hope this is clear also remember b12 is having only animal source it does not have plant source this tingling sensation this pinpoint sensation paresthesia sensation sensation is due to deficiency of which vitamin it is due to deficiency of vitamin b12 followed by b9 followed by b1 followed by vitamin d and this was a question asked in your exam another important point that tingling sensation in covid 19 patients is due to excess of it it is due to excess of which vitamin i am i am telling you excess it is excess of vitamin b6 in the covid 19 patients now let's see this another important chart which is very important deficiency of vitamin b6 in b6 deficiency there will be increased homocysteine levels and which acid is going to accumulate that is xanthurinic acid is going to increase in the b6 deficiency in b9 deficiency homocysteine will also increase in b12 deficiency also homocysteine will increase but in b9 deficiency the acid which is increasing that is known as figlu formino glutamate is going to increase and in b12 deficiency l methyl melanonic melonic acid is going to increase l methyl melanonic acid is going to increase in b12 deficiency here you can remember these two important points which can be asked in every exam guys in b12 deficiency homocysteine levels increase also methyl melanoyl coa increase but in b9 deficiency homocysteine increase but methyl melanoyl coa is normal it's a very important point this is asked in multiple times in various exams what is the treatment of b9 deficiency if in question you will be given the patient is having mm, uh, increased homocysteine level and normal methyl melanoyl coa uh, levels what you are going to give you are going to give b9 therapy now let's talk about vitamin a vitamin a has three forms retinol retinal and retinoic acid retinol is important for reproduction a reproduction and retinal is important for vision and retinoic acid is important for growth and differentiation The plant source of vitamin A is known as beta carotene. And what is the richest, richest source of vitamin A? That is carrot. And this vitamin A is stored in I2 cells of liver. It is stored in the I2 cells of liver. And it is one of the antioxidant. What are the examples of antioxidants? A, C, E, D and also a mineral which is known as selenium and the most important antioxidant is vitamin a vitamin a deficiency is very important for your exam and the earliest symptom of vitamin a deficiency is night blindness and the earliest manifestation is also night blindness most specific manis manifestation is by dot spots you might have heard the classification of x1b x2b and the by dot spots coming in x1b by dot spot comes in 
x1 b b for by dot spot what's meant by by dot spot it's a foamy appearance on the conjunctiva you can see this foamy appearance on the conjunctiva due to keratin deposition it is due to keratin deposition in the vitamin a deficiency and it is, it is most specific man manifestation and also remember the vitamin a deficiency is most common cause of preventable blindness you can prevent this blindness by giving the vitamin a to the patients also remember there is a condition which is known as phrynoderma phryno phrynoderma see this condition this is phrynoderma which is also seen in vitamin a deficiency now let's see another topic that is vitamin a toxicity in vitamin a toxicity the patient will be having pseudo tumor cerebri it means the icp is raised the patient will feel that icp is raised intracranial pressure icp is raised in pseudo tumor cerebri why uh, i have in uh, uh, if, if there is any tumor inside the brain the patient will be having raised icp raised icp but here is pseudo tumor cerebri the tumor is not there inside the brain but still the patient can feel there is increased icp or uh, patient will be having raised icp therefore it is seen in the vitamin a toxicity also lysosomes are affected in the vitamin a toxicity and the patient will be having alopecia also remember pseudo tumor cerebri is uh, also associated with estrogen and uh, this can be the exam question and just try to remember uh, these uh, few points which can be asked in the exam now let's see another important topic that is vitamin d vitamin d is also known as calcitriol what is the process of synthesis of vitamin d it's very important you have to know remember whole chart which i am giving you first of all first important point that vitamin d is synthesized from cholesterol it is synthesized from cholesterol now see how we get vitamin d from the cholesterol this cholesterol in the liver and intestinal mucosa in the mucosa it is going to be converted into 7 d hydrocholesterol this reaction is going to occur inside the liver and intestinal mucosa once we get get 7 d hydrocholesterol this 7 d hydrocholesterol is going to enter into skin here is our 7 d hydrocholesterol inside the skin and under the exposure of uvb rays under the exposure of uvb rays it is going to be converted into cholecalciferol which is also known as vitamin b vitamin d3 or d3 simply see guys now this d3 or cholecalciferol is going to enter into liver where it is going to be converted into 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol and i have told you this vitamin this d3 is also known as cholecalciferol here the enzyme works which is known as 25 hydroxylase it means this 25 hydroxylase is going to add hydroxyl group to cholecalciferol at the 25th position see guys the first hydroxylation occurs in liver we have one liver and the first hydroxylation occurs in the liver now this 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol is going to enter into kidneys here is our 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol now the enzyme works here that is one alpha hydroxylase or alpha one hydroxylase now it is going to uh, uh, here here is going to occur seven hydro uh, second hydroxylation therefore we get calcitriol calcitriol is the active form of vitamin d3 and the whole name the full name of calcitriol is 
वन ट्वेंटी फाइव डाई हाइड्रोक्सी कोली कैल्सफिरोल सी गाइज दिस वॉज विटामिन डी थ्री कोली कैल्सिफ्रॉल नाउ देर आर टू हाइड्रोक्सीशन वन इज एट फर्स्ट पोजिशन एंड सेकेंड इज एट ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ पोजिशन देर आर टू हाइड्रोक्सीशन देर फोर रिमेंबर वी हैव टू किडनीज एंड द सेकेंड हाइड्रोक्सीशन आकर्स इन द किडनीज आई होप दिस इज क्लियर नाउ सी गाइज सम इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स दैट विटामिन डी इंक्रीज ब्लड कैल्शियम एंड इंक्रीज फॉस्फेट कैल्सिटोनिन इज डूइंग अपोजिट एक्शन इट डिक्रीजेज इट डिक्रीजेज द सिरम कैल्शियम ब्लड कैल्शियम एंड डिक्रीजेज ब्लड फॉस्फेट बट द पैराथाइरॉइड हारमोन इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज ब्लड कैल्शियम एंड डिक्रीज ब्लड फॉस्फेट विटामिन डी एंड कैल्सटोन इन हैव अपोजिट एक्शन एंड इन पैराथाइरॉइड हारमोन यू कैन सी इंक्रीज कैल्शियम डिक्रीज फॉस्फेट रिमेंबर दीज पॉइंट दे विल हेल्प यू विटामिन डी डेफिशंसी इन चिल्ड्रन रिजल्ट रिकेट्स एंड इन एडल्ट इट रिजल्ट ऑस्टियो मलेशिया विटामिन के और विटामिन के इज फॉर इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर द कॉगलेशन के फॉर कॉगलेशन के फॉर विटामिन के एंड दिस विटामिन के इज हैविंग थ्री फॉर्म्स द के वन के टू एंड के थ्री के वन इज ऑल्सो नोन एज फाइलोक्विनोन के टू मैनाक्विनोन के थ्री मैनाडायन फाइलोक्विनोन इज फेट सॉलिबल के टू इज ऑल्सो फेट सॉलिबल एंड के थ्री इज वाटर सॉलिबल विटामिन के डेफिशंसी रिजल्ट हेमरेजिक डिजीज ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न हेमरेजिक डिजीज ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न रिचेस्ट सोर्स ऑफ विटामिन ए एंड विटामिन डी इज हेलीबर्ड फिश लिवर ऑयल एंड रिचेस्ट सोर्स ऑफ एसेंशियल फैटी एसिड इज सेफ फ्लॉर ऑयल क्रोमियम डेफिशंसी This chromium is very important. Why? Chromium enhances insulin action. It enhances. It increases the action of insulin. If there is chromium deficiency, the patient will be having glucose intolerance. What are the limiting amino acids? In maize, we have uh, limiting amino acids that is tryptophan and lysine. In pulses, we have methionine and cysteine, which are very less inside the pulses. Okay. In selenium deficiency, uh, the selenium deficiency is known as Cushing's disease, which is endemic cardiomyopathy. Okay. It's problem in the heart. In selenium excess, selenium excess. is known as cushion back disease this is cushion's disease this is cushion cushion back disease now let's see some important points about the collagen collagen is most abundant protein it is most abundant protein there are different types of collagen type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 and type 5 type 1 is present in bones you can see one is written at the end of bone and type 2 is present in the cartilage you can sound the cartilage like cartilage cartilage one is present also in skin and type 3 is present in arteries type 4 is present in basement membrane of glomerulus it's present in the basement membrane of glomerulus and type 5 is present in dermo epidermal junction see guys alport syndrome alport syndrome it is defect in type 4 collagen it means here is problem in the basement membrane of glomerulus in the basement membrane of glomerulus we have type 4 collagen if the patient is having defect in this 
uh, collagen the patient will be having hematuria or proteinuria all these things will be present in the alport syndrome another syndrome is ehlers danlos syndrome in ehlers danlos syndrome the patient will be having hyper extensible joints you can see the hyper extensible fingers here hyper extensible fingers and the patient will be having loose skin you can see here the patient is having loose skin another important disease which is osteogenesis imperfecta which is also known as brittle bone disease in which you will see collagen type 1 defect and the patient will be having blue sclera very important don't forget this anywhere you will see blue sclera go for osteogenesis imperfecta in question you will be given multiple fractures and blue sclera go for the diagnosis of go for the diagnosis of osteogenesis imperfecta which is also known as brittle bone disease now comes our very important topic that is known as marfan syndrome marfan syndrome is autosomal dominant condition it is mutation in fibrillin 1 gene it is mutation in fibrillin 1 gene patient will be having tall stature and the patient will be having lens dislocation lens dislocation the lens dislocation will be suprotemporal another condition which is known as wheel marchesani syndrome where the lens dislocation will be infronasal how to remember guys see guys this is the point i am marking here suppose this is the nasal side and this is the temporal side of a patient do like this take a line from nasal side okay from upwards that means supero then take the line to the temporal side from superior to temporal side that is supero temporal and the supero temporal is in the marfan syndrome okay see at in the name of marfan there is mar jab koi marta hai to wo upar chala jata hai na to yahan pe ho gaya uh the patient uh the line will go up it is the, it's only for the uns, uh, understanding purpose that is supero temporal wheel marchesani syndrome wheel marchesani syndrome is infronasal infro nasal infro nasal i hope this is clear by this uh, way it will be very easy to remember the lens dislocation in the mar uh, marfan syndrome and wheel marchesani syndrome and also you can see guys this this thumb is extended more to the edge of a hand you can see you cannot do this process and this uh, can be only seen in the marfan syndrome cause of death in the marfan syndrome is aortic dissection very important cause of death in the marfan syndrome is aortic dissection now let's see another topic that is known as protein energy malnutrition this is the patient of marasmus this is the patient of kawashirkar see guys i'm going to make it very simple for you kawashirkar is a protein deficiency it's a protein deficiency and marasmus is a calorie deficiency kawashkar is protein deficiency and marasmus is calorie deficiency see guys in calories we have fats and carbs once the patient is having the deficiency of fats and carbs this fat deficiency it results the loss of subcutaneous fat in the baby in the in the ch child okay you can see the subcutaneous fat is lost in the child and the ribs are very prominent in the child but in case of protein deficiency 
the patient will be having fat sugar baby fat sugar baby and the edema is present edema is present in both uh, marasmus as well as in kawashkar but the edema is more prominent in the kawashkar okay okay in, in question if you will see edema like condition you will go for kawashkar okay fat sugar baby the, the kawashkar baby is also known as fat sugar baby in protein deficiency why the edema is occurring you might have heard the protein is very important that it will uh, it will grab all the fluid uh, around it and it will not let the uh, water or any fluid go outside the blood vessel and result in the edema if the protein is deficient obviously that can result in the and the fluid will loss from the intravascular compartment to the extravascular compartment and that will result in the edema and also remember there is a sign which is known as flag sign which is present in the kawashkar what is flag sign you can see if this is the hair of a child if this is the hair of a child you will see alternate bands you will see sorry you will see white white bands in the hair which is seen in the kawashkar and that is known as flag sign and go and check the image of flag sign hexokinase hexokinase has different types like hexokinase 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 hexokinase type 1 is most abundant and type 2 is present in muscle and heart and type 4 is present in liver and hypothalamus and therefore the type 4 is also known as glucokinase see guys here are some questions which are very important what is most sensitive and accurate test for monitoring treatment response in cml patients if you want to check the uh, treatment response in the cml patients then the most sensitive test will be rt pcr the most sensitive test will be rt pcr you know uh, there uh, in cml we have a translocation of various chromosomes and that translocation can be de detected by rt pcr Uh, another question is which structure of protein is not denatured after heating up to 100 degree the answer is primary structure of proteins it's not degraded if even if we increase the heat up to 100 degrees most abundant amino acid found in collagen is answer is glycine we have discussed it which is a product of purine metabolism product of purine metabolism is uric acid lactate dehydrogenase is present in it is present in cytosol a subcellular organelle which is associated with killing of viruses and fungi viruses and bacteria that is peroxisome mitochondria lysosomes golgi apparatus answer is lysosomes very easy questions fat is stored in uh, in uh, fat is stored in which form in tissues it is stored in triglycerides fat is stored in the form of triglycerides in the tissues dna packing is done by it is done by histones see guys another important point if in question you will get the history of a pant factory worker pant factory will in exam you will get the history of pant factory worker think of lead poisoning think of lead poisoning see see this question pant factory worker working uh, for 20 years case of case of joint pain insomnia fatigue constipation headache all these are the symptoms of lead poisoning okay and the lead is going to inhibit which enzyme that is known as ferroketolase 
paro keto lase it is going to enable led is going to inhibit this enzyme the answer will be paro keto lase now see another question a patient has multiple tendon xanthomas the patient is having multiple tendon xanthomas and uh, serum cholesterol level is very high 398 milligram per dl lds is very high 222 milligram per dl were found to be raised statins like atorvastatin rosvastatin these drugs were given to decrease the level of cholesterol in this patient what is the diagnosis and this is the case of familial hypercholesterolemia see guys if in exam you will be given multiple tendons and thomas and ldl and cholesterol is raised ldl is raised go for familial hypercholesterolemia okay protein not synthesized in liver immunoglobulins are not synthesized in liver albumins plasma enzymes acute phase reactants are synthesized in liver immunoglobulins are formed from the b cells or plasma cells in zellweger syndrome which is absent peroxisomes are absent all are uh, all of the following are true regarding mitochondrial dna except mitochondrial dna except it is circular in nature yes inherited from mother it is correct 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 low mutation rate no it's strong it has high mutation rate the answer is c most of etc proteins are synthesized within the mitochondria itself yes it is correct major product of fatty acid synthesis is it is palmitate amino acid here the question is asking amino acid linking krebs cycle and urea cycle the answer is aspartate here it is asking amino acid if the question is asking only uh, suppose the question is asking substance or substrate if the question is asking substrate linking crab cycle and urea cycle then the answer will be fumarate okay but here it is asking amino acid amino acid is aspartate now let's see lysosomal storage diseases which are very important in lysosomal storage diseases there is the accumulation of mucopolysaccharides inside the lysosomes all lysosomal storage diseases are autosomal recessive except hunter's disease which is x linked recessive because hunter's disease is seen in the males only okay hurler's syndrome hurler syndrome is due to deficiency of alpha l iduronu days iduronu days and in hurler disease you will be see uh, you will be having corneal clouding corneal clouding in hunter's syndrome you will be having deficiency of iduronu days sulfatase and the patient will not be having corneal clouding you might have heard that hunters have good eyesight that's why uh, you will not be having corneal clouding in the hunters disease and you, but you will be having uh, corneal clouding in the hurler syndrome this can be the exam question so try to remember them and also remember the hunters disease is only seen in the males and it is x linked recessive and rest all lysosomal storage disease are autosomal recessive now let's see the lipid storage diseases lipid storage diseases there are different types of lipid storage disease like neman pick disease neman pick disease neman pick disease gaucher's disease krebs disease fabris disease tay sachs disease sandhoff's disease the enzyme deficiency is very important try to remember these enzyme neman pick disease is due to deficiency of sphingomyelinase gaucher's is due to deficiency of beta glucose cerebrosidase krebs is due to beta galactosidase sorry it is 
gauchers is due to beta gluco it is glucose cerebrosidase and crabs is due to beta galactocerebrosidase the first one are most important fabry's disease is due to alpha galactocerebrosidase deficiency tay sachs is due to hexosaminidase deficiency and synops is due to hexosaminidase a and b deficiency and the crabs disease is most common lysosomal storage disease see guys there is a condition which is known as farber's disease uh, it is another disease this farber's disease resembles with rheumatoid arthritis and febreze disease it resembles skill cell crisis all lysosomal uh, all lipid storage disease sorry all lipid st storage diseases uh, gave cherry red spot except febris and gauchers they don't give cherry red spot on the funds examination see guys in gauchers disease what you can see nucleus is pushed to the periphery of the cells by the massive accumulation of glucose glucose cerebrosides uh, structures in the lysosomes you can see glucose uh, cerebrosides are accumulated here inside the cell and the nucleus is pushed aside and uh, this appearance you can see this is the appearance which is known as wrinkled tissue paper and this is the gaucher cell which you can see here okay this is also the exam uh, question in exam you will be given the wrinkled tissue paper appearance or uh, you, you can be given this image also and go for go for the disease gaucher's disease okay which is due to deficiency of beta glucose cerebrosidase and the glucose cerebrosides are accumulated in the uh in the uh, inside the cell okay this is the cherry red spot which you can see here on the fundus examination here i am giving you a mnemonic that is known as cherry trees never grow tall in sand cherry trees never grow tall in sand this cherry red spot can be unilateral or bilateral it can be found in acute conditions and in chronic conditions if it is acute and unilateral it can be seen in central retinal artery it is artery not venous central retinal artery occlusion it is acute and unilateral in trauma trauma it is also acute and unilateral never it is for naman pick disease uh, G for Gaucher's disease, T for Tay Sachs disease can be a question in the exam or here Naman Pick disease, Sand Hops disease. Okay, and all these are chronic and bilateral. Here uh, I have mentioned this classification of amino acids, and uh, I have marked the red star, which are very important, like aliphatic amino acids include glycine alanine valine leucine and isoleucine and in aromatic amino acids we have tyrosine tryptophan and alanine semi-essential include arginine and histidine and 21st amino acid is selenocysteine and 22nd amino acid is pyrolysine i hope uh, you will remember all these amino acids which i have marked with red star and guys uh, for this i welcome you for the guidance session if students are willing to take the guidance session you can contact me for sure i am going to help you how to prepare for the for the upcoming fmg exam now see another condition which is the very last topic of this session that is alkaptinuria alkaptinuria is also known as black urine disease it is due to deficiency of homogentic acid dioxygenase 
what happens in this condition due to this uh, due to uh, this deficiency of this enzyme the homogentesic acid accumulates okay see guys in this question you will be giving giving uh, you will be given that urine turns black when left standing when you take the urine sample from the patient and you, you will keep this urine sample for some time to expose to air when you will expose this urine sample to air this urine sample will be turning into the black will be turning into the black color and what are the clinical features in the alkaptinuria the patient will be having ochronos i have told you that the pigment that is if there is deficiency of this enzyme there will be accumulation of homogentesic acid that homogentesic acid will accumulate in various sites like it will accumulate inside the cartilage that will result ochronos what is meant by ochronos it is the black discoloration of cartilage of pinna and sclera even the sclera will be black and it mm, uh, this uh, homogeneous acid will also accumulate inside the intervertebral discs that can result in the calcification of multiple intervertebral discs due to deposition of homogeneous acid i have written already here and what will be the treatment in these patients treatment is also important guys because uh, the treatment is also asked in the exam there is no effective enzyme therapy available in the alkaptonuria alkaptinuria and in diet what you are going to give you will limit tyrosine and phenylalanine these two amino acids should be limited in the diet okay but there is no effective enzyme therapy available for alkaptinuria but most of the students do a, a very big mistake in the exam they they mention the answer give the tyrosine to the patient no we have to limit the tyrosine and phenylalanine but the effect to and there is no an effect to enzyme therapy sorry uh, most of the students do this mistake that they, they are uh, going to give the enzyme to the patients uh, in the question okay that's the wrong thing you have to remember there is no effective therapy available okay and you have to limit the tyrosine and phenylalanine hope uh everything was clear to you guys and let's meet in the next session for the pharm pharmacology and hope that will also help you i'm preparing the another session for the pharma for sure uh, also that is going to come in few days and that will help you okay good luck thank you